you doing out there? Welcome to Carrie's Corner. Thank you for tuning in today. We are getting everything set up over here so that I can see any comments, any chat comments, all that kind of fun stuff. But uh, thanks for tuning in today. And officially, you are officially kicking it with Carrie. I'm Carrie, and this is my corner. While people are tuning in, it is winter over here in the Charlotte area, and it is my favorite time of year. If you haven't guessed, it's the holiday season. My family chooses to celebrate Christmas, but there is so much out there to celebrate and so many different cultural and religious beliefs and traditions. So today, if you're tuning in and you want to give me a little comment, tell me where you're watching from. Maybe tell me like a favorite holiday tradition that you have. Um, I love learning about holiday traditions and all of that really fun stuff. So <clears throat> drop me a little bit of information about, again, where are you from? What do you celebrate this season? Uh, my house currently looks like uh, Buddy the Elf was our interior designer, so I'm not going to lie. I love it. I love it. Uh, my favorite thing about Christmas, if you haven't guessed, is Christmas trees. I love Christmas trees. Um, in my house, we have three trees. We have two artificial or fake trees, um, and we have one real tree. And when we would go get our real tree, we used to have to strap it to the hood of our car and we would look like the Griswolds going down the road. If you don't know who the Griswolds are, Christmas Vacation, famous American holiday movie. Give it a watch. It's pretty funny. Uh, so as people are logging in today, I'm going to share a fun fact about Christmas trees. Okay? Um, oh, yes, Yusuf, I do remember you. I do remember you from Jordan. And you're on the Jordan flag is a beautiful tree. Obviously, it's part of the reason I may love Jordan so much is because it's beautiful and your flag is a tree. I love trees. Um, <clears throat> so let me get back to my fun fact. Um, Yusuf distracted me. My fun fact for today is that, did you know that it is a cultural tradition in Poland to hang your Christmas tree upside down from the ceiling? From the ceiling. Isn't that crazy? Um, and it spread. This tradition spread throughout Poland. And, um, oh, Samira, his wife. Oh, hello, Samira. Sorry about that. Um, in Poland, po um, this tradition started, and it was really, really cool. But then it extended. It spread throughout Poland, and then it spread all throughout Europe, actually. And um, poorer families... Uh, really adopted this tradition because they didn't have those big gathering rooms, those big common areas. So by hanging the tree upside down, um, it made more room in their common area. So I just thought that was really fascinating. And if you Google now, it's now it's like a trend, right? If you Google upside down Christmas trees, you can purchase one online and it comes with like the kit to hang it upside down. My husband told me we're not doing that. But I was all about it. I was ready to have an upside down Christmas tree. So I have a Christmas tree in my office, my little pink one. So maybe I'll hang it upside down next week. We'll see. Um, but the more you know, right? I love a good fun fact, especially around the holidays. So I'm actually going to take my hat off so that I can talk to everyone because uh, <laughs> it does get a little toasty in there. It gets a little toasty in my tree. But hopefully that gave you a little bit of a chuckle this morning um, and made you think about a holiday tradition that you love. Hope you're nice and cozy and ready to talk about the English test. Yay! Everyone loves the English test. Um, I know many Christmas wishes this year are revolving around, please let me get a passing score on my English exam. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. Passing that pesky test is just one of the hurdles that you're going to have to jump through, but I'm here to help and I know you can do it. So today the title of our show uh, is going, is called Testing 1-2 Is This Thing On? And what I'm going to talk about is specifically the TOEFL and the PTE um, and any other test that involves speaking into a microphone, okay? And not to a live person. The IELTS is usually to a live person, either via video chat or you're physically there with them. 
Um, but specifically, I know the TOEFL and the PTE. I know everybody's all excited about the PTE, right? How many of you, um, how many of you in the comments or the chat, how many of you are planning on taking the PTE? Or how many of you, if you're headed to California, you know, you got that TOEFL coming up. So I want to talk today about speaking into a microphone and answering those questions via computer. Okay. Fun gadgets. Now, when we think of microphones, a lot of us think of, now don't judge me, I have two small girls, and so my microphone is um, Anna and Elsa and Olaf. Uh, I'm not gonna push the button because then she'll sing to you. Um, but when I think of a microphone, this is what I think of, right? A nice, pretty, lovely microphone. However, when you go into these testing centers, your microphone is gonna be a headset and it's gonna be a microphone attached to a headset. Now, I don't have one of those fancy with the headset and the microphone. I do have, however, my daughter uh, has a DJ set. I don't know why we bought her that, but she has a DJ set and it's got you know the this really cool microphone with it, right? Tons of fun. This is similar to what you're gonna see. It's just gonna have the big earmuffs with it, but you're gonna usually have one of these fun devices to speak with when you're working with a microphone and the PTE or the TOEFL. Um, one of the most important things, and I know this is weird, like this, this is just, it's weird. It's uncomfortable for me, first of all, because it's made for a child and I'm obviously not. Um, but second of all, it, it, it's different and it can become really distracting, especially when you're trying to speak. Like I almost want to like play a game and pretend like I'm, you know, like landing an airplane or counting down for NASA. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I said, I love people tuning in and dropping comments. That's great. Um, but once you get your microphone positioned on your head, once you're ready for the speaking portion and you get your microphone positioned on the head, on your head, um, I see, um, I see those questions in the chat box. Um, some of them I'll be able to answer. Some of them I won't, but we do have um, amazing people from our marketing team and who are standing by. So if you drop questions in the, in the chat box and I don't get to answer them, just so you know, they will be answered. Okay. Maybe not by me, but by someone who knows a lot more about it than me. Um, especially about a bachelor's and an NCLEX. So, um, they definitely will be able to answer your questions. But when you're positioning your microphone, you kind of want to think about if you were going to whistle, right? Um, don't whistle when you're in the test center, <laughs> but, um, where that air comes out, that's really where you want to position your microphone. You don't want it up here because then, you know, you'll be listening to yourself blink. You don't want it down here or over here. If it's over here, it's going to pick up a lot of other noises. You really, but you don't want to eat it either because you, <laughs> that's a, that's a lot. I can only imagine, um, what these people, what the, the, the PTE and the TOEFL how they score them and what sounds they hear. Um, lots of coughing and all of that. Um, <clears throat> um, I do, I see your question, how will they answer? Um, I, we have, when this is recorded, we have people who um, go back and they look at the chat and they look at the questions and they'll take care of answering those questions. So I promise, don't worry, you will be answered. Um, so make sure your microphone is positioned where you need it to be, okay? And once it's set, don't mess with it. Don't adjust it because they hear. This This makes a lot of noise. And if they can't hear you properly and they can't hear you adequately, that's gonna impact your score, okay? So make sure, make sure that this is positioned. And once it's positioned, leave it alone. Now, if it moves, if you notice that it's moved and maybe it's kind of wandered up here a little bit while you're answering, don't adjust it while you're answering. Wait till you're done answering then adjust it, okay? Just some, again, little things that we don't think about because you're so worried about speaking English, right? You're so worried about acing this test that you don't think about these fun little technical details that are so important to making sure you get the best score possible, okay? Um, the other thing I wanna talk about in regards to speaking with microphones and speaking in those testing centers um, specifically is that I, and I've heard a lot of feedback from candidates about distractions in the testing environment. Okay. And I know that especially when you have to go and you're speaking into the microphone and those headsets can only do so much when it comes to blocking out sound. Right. Um, oh, hello, Veronica. Thank you so much. Um, 
But those testing centers can can there's other people talking and that's so distracting. You're trying to focus on giving your answer. Um, there's noises, there's coughing, there's chairs moving. I know that that is not the most conducive environment for taking this test. Believe me, I know, I understand, especially if you're like me and I'm like, I'm like a dog, like squirrel, I'm going to look. Um, I'm easily distracted, very easily distracted. So if you're like me in that regard, that makes testing um, that much harder, right? But, but think about it. Your nurses, you work possibly in chaos every day. Like you, if you work in an emergency room, like someone's going to come out and their heart's going to be on the outside of their chest, right? <laughs> so that's chaos. And you have to manage to think and, pre and, and be prepared to know what you're doing. So kind of go into it with that mentality of, you know what? I got this. I can do it. I'm going to block out all of the distractions. It's a mind game. It's a massive mind game. Um, <clears throat> I have been working with PTE and TOEFL coordinators, and I have a really, really exciting announcement involving the TOEFL and the PTE at the end of the show. So make sure you watch all the way to the end, okay? How's that for a cliffhanger? Um, but in the PTE, for a fact, I know all testing sites are the same. So don't think that if you take the PTE in Manila um, that you're getting a benefit or that you have a better environment than someone in um, South Africa, okay? The PTE ensures that every single testing center is exactly the same, down to like the art on the walls. So they're all the same environment. So don't think that, you know, because you took it somewhere and didn't do well, you need to take it somewhere else. Not true. They're all the same. So that's another just kind of fun fact for the PTE. The other thing I want to talk about in regards to voice um, and speaking into a microphone, and one of the perks with the IELTS, and you can see this as a perk or a disadvantage, um, but body language. Body language is huge in communication. Your facial expressions, your smile, how you carry yourself, your posture, all of those things are so important with the IELTS. And I know those are things we don't like to think about, but they are. They're so important in the IELTS. Um, you don't have that in the PTE or the TOEFL or when any test that you're being recorded. You're not able to express yourself with your smile. They can't tell that you're happy um, when you're speaking. So voice inflection is so important with any test where you're taking and you're being recorded. Um, with a microphone, like I said, they can't see your body language. So they need to hear and feel your emotion. Especially, um, I know the PTE and the TOEFL start out with opinion-based questions. So that's your opportunity to really show um, your abilities to speak English fluently. And when you're able to use inflection properly, that shows more confidence. And that's going to increase your score. That's true even with the IELTS. So any IELTS people I have out there, monotone is never the way to go voice inflection, right? A nice rhythm when you're speaking. <clears throat> um, scoring, just another fun fact. So the TOEFL has a real person that listens to your scoring and the TOEFL has people from all over the world. And another fun fact is the people scoring your TOEFL speaking, their primary language is not English. They have people with Indian accents, with Filipino accents, with South African accents. They have people with so many different accents um, that are scoring your exam. So don't think that the person um, scoring your exam is, is someone like me, whose native language is, Engl language is English and I speak minimal, un poquito espanol, nada mucho. I don't speak a lot of Spanish. Um, so with the TOEFL, you do have a real person scoring you. The PTE, however, has developed an algorithm, um, and they have a computer program that scores, but it is trained, it's programmed, they piloted this program, created this program to catch, um, your accents and to catch the different accents as you're speaking. Um, so if you have any of those questions about speaking with a microphone and speaking with your accent, um, the PTE does have an automated system, whereas the TOEFL does have an actual person listening. So let's talk about the respective tests quickly. 
just so that you are aware of kind of how this happens and how your recordings happen. The TOEFL, keep in mind the TOEFL is targeted more academically. It's going to be targeted more towards the classroom, meaning international students who want to come to the United States um, and study. So a lot of the TOEFL questions are going to be around college campuses and college lectures. Question one, however, for the TOEFL is explain a choice. So it's going to ask your opinion on something and there's no correct answer there. There's not. That's the beauty of the first question. So hopefully you can get your nerves out. Um, it's, a, it's the shortest response time at 45 seconds. So your response is 45 seconds. It's limited to 45 seconds. Um, but explain a choice. Question two through four, questions two through four are usually um, academic related. So you'll have possibly a campus related question and you'll have to read a passage, listen to a conversation, and then you'll be asked a question on the screen. You get 60 seconds to respond to that one. Um, for questions two through four, a little tip for those, questions two through four on the TOEFL. What I want you to listen to is what's the main subject? What are they talking about, okay? subject matter. And then the second thing I want you to listen for is be able to provide two examples from what you heard. Two examples. That's what they're looking for. Did you hear it correctly? And can you give and summarize two examples from what you heard? That's true for all of two through four. All of two through four. Um, the biggest thing, and once you have that structure in mind of what's this about, and I need to find two examples that support what it's about, then you have to keep in mind you have 60 seconds to answer. Okay? So let's say that you don't fill up the full 60 seconds. Let's say that you talk for 50 seconds. And that's fine. That's fine. Um, you sit there quietly afterwards. You know, try not to cough or you know, any of those fun noises. Um, but sit there quietly until the, the time has elapsed, until the time is done. Um, one of the questions on the TOEFL is usually an academic, um, it's just a lecture. So you'll have to listen to the lecture and then recall the lecture. Don't try to retell that lecture. Don't try to give the entire lecture. Don't try to give an entire summary of the lecture. You can't do that in 60 seconds. Again, focus on subject matter of the lecture and two details from the lecture, okay? Pay very close attention to what the question's asking. So that's the TOEFL. On the flip side, and on a very completely opposite flip side, you have the PTE. PTE is structured entirely different than the TOEFL. Completely different. The TOEFL, yes, with the speaking, it is also measuring your listening, your reading, and your speaking abilities. However, you're only being scored on your speaking ability. The TOEFL, or the, the PTE, excuse me, the PTE, however, combines writing and speaking together. So what I mean by that is it's a much shorter test. It's only two hours long. It's one session. You sit in one session. Um, there are a total of eight tasks in that section of the test. Six of those tasks are targeted towards speaking. Two of them are targeted towards writing. Okay. Question one is a personal introduction. They claim that this is not scored. It's just so that you can get comfortable with their equipment. You can get comfortable speaking into a microphone, all that fun stuff. So I think that's great. Shout out to the PTE for offering that little practice run before you're live and recorded and scored. Uh, question two is a read aloud. You have 60 seconds um, or uh, it's up to 60 words. I apologize. It's up to 60 words on the screen. So it could be 40, it could be 50, it could be 60. I just know there's a maximum of 60. Question three, you'll be asked to repeat a sentence. Um, question three is a little different. So with some of the questions, you'll hear a beep when it's time for you to start recording. With question three, and there's another one on here that's very similar. With question three, there is no beep once you hear the audio. When the audio finishes and you're asked to repeat the sentence, the recording box, the recording status box will show recording. So with the PTE, it is very, very, very important that you pay attention to the screen. You're not always going to hear a sound to signal you to begin speaking. So that's very, very important with the PTE. Question four is to describe an image. And with question four, you will hear a short tone before you begin recording. So don't start speaking before you hear that tone. 
because they won't pick it up. I know, this goes back to back to where you don't hear a tone and then you will hear a tone. So you have to be on your A game here. You have to be making sure you pay attention to those things. Um, if you start speaking before the microphone opens and it says recording, you're not gonna be recorded. And then they'll just get half of your answer and that sounds really silly, so don't do that. Uh, question five is retell a lecture. Wait for the countdown, the microphone opens. Again, you'll hear a tone when it's time to begin speaking. Question six, we are back to hearing no tone. So there's no short tone to tell you when to begin speaking on this one. There could just be audio, okay? Um, there could be audio and an image with question six. So make sure you're listening and viewing. Pay attention to all of those things. So to summarize all of that, um, it's important to follow the directions on the screen. And that goes for the TOEFL, the PTE, anything. Always, always, always. I, I've seen so many scores not as high as they could have been because people didn't pay attention to directions. And I know, I know you're nervous and there's a lot going on in the testing environment, but you've got to pay attention to that screen. You've got to be able to block everything out. I know that PTE is really trying to get noise canceling headphones everywhere to every country and to every testing site, um, but that's kind of a process. So friendly tips to kind of wrap it all up. Uh, for both tests, you can only record your audio once. You get one shot. One shot wonder, right? You get one shot. Pay attention to when you're recording. Make sure your entire response is recorded. And this means it's really, really important to start strong. So when it starts and you're, you're live, you're recording, you don't want to start with, uh, um, uh. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. You've got 60 seconds to make a really good impression and five seconds of, uh, <laughs> that's not, not good. <laughs> not good. Okay. Get rid of the verbal pauses. Be prepared. Start strong. Start with words, not verbal pauses. Okay. When you finish, and if you finish before time is up, just be silent. Pay attention to time. Time is so important. It's a big box. You can't miss it. It's going to count it down for you. And I know that that can kind of cause a little bit of, yay, I only have five seconds left. I got to wrap it up. Pay attention to that time. Okay? It's kind of like on the Academy Awards. You know how they have a, a timer on the Academy Awards? I don't know if you knew this. But in the Academy Awards, there's a timer up there. And a lot of times actors or actresses, when they win, they'll be like, I know that my time is up, but I'm still going. That's not going to happen for you. Okay? You're not Tom Hanks. If you are Tom Hanks watching, hi. Uh, but you're not Tom Hanks. They're not going to extend the camera for you. You got to wrap it up. Uh, make sure you're not fidgeting with the microphone. Again, I cannot stress the importance of this. Um, make sure you're not fidgeting in your chair, swiveling back and forth tapping your fingers, keep as much distracting and noise away as possible. Okay. All right. So this wraps up this week's edition of Carrie's Corner brought to you by the amazing folks at Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. I have two exciting announcements before we go. Two. Okay. The first one. Next week, I will begin a series, a very short series on demystifying the exam. Okay. My first guest. So I'm going to have a guest on the show. Carrie has to share her corner, and she is an executive from TOEFL. She's from the TOEFL. So all you TOEFL test takers out there, and remember, the TOEFL is the only test accepted in all 50 states. So if I have any early phase watchers, if you're just in phase two or three, and you're like, I just want to take a test and get it done, the TOEFL is gold. You're going to be accepted. It's a good test. Um, but I will have someone from the TOEFL next week, and I'm so excited. She will be on to demystify, to answer your questions live, so make sure you're tuning in and you're ready to go. Um, the following week, I have a guest from the Pearson PTE. That's right. I know there are lots of nurses out there who have a lot of questions about the PTE. Um, you're excited about the PTE. CGFNS has just kind of announced um, spreading uh, their acceptance of these exams, not just for the visa screen, but for the certification process. So all that kind of fun stuff um, is being announced and being discussed with our TOEFL and PTE um, representatives. So I'm so, so, so excited to have them on the show. They're two very, very nice ladies. Um, I know you'll enjoy them. They're very, very, very um, excited to be on the show and share their programs with you. I know the PTE is actually rolling out some new apps to help their candidates practice as well. 
So, my name is Carrie. Thanks for kicking it with me in my corner today. But, as always, I want to remind you, don't face the corner, face the world with Worldwide. Over and out.